my goodness, this is fascinating. Fascinating. Thanks for the science lesson. We call that a flat affect. They look like this. They're just very flat. Very excited. This is more prevalent when it comes to males. Johnny is not looking for friends. He was he was not happy that I called him friend. I don't call him friend because I mean of course he's not my friend. I just didn't know what to call him. Johnny wants to be alone. Johnny does not want to be bothered with you. Dad, I love you. What? I love you so much, Dad. Because Johnny wants me to reject you. You know what I like about you? What? Nothing. Johnny may not even answer the phone. Johnny does not want to be bothered. Leave me alone. I just want coffee. He will not play checkers with anyone. I don't want any human connection whatsoever. You will not find Johnny at a house music festival. They may like reading books. They may like engaging in puzzles. Life, and that's the puzzle. You're closer to things and not people. They don't care. I don't care. They don't care what you think. They don't care about your praise. They don't care about your criticism. I don't give a They don't care. This person is seen as a loner on steroids. They don't bond too well. Are you interested in how economically disadvantaged workers get opportunities to become mainstream employees in high demand industries? If that is your interest, you will want to tune in today as we introduce you to Blessed Ministries Incorporated and the powerful people behind the scenes. Stay with us. Dr. Lisa Lacan, whose background includes a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling, a CRC or certification in rehabilitation counseling, and a PhD in psychiatric rehabilitation. Dr. Lacan has been a resident of New Jersey for 22 years, but is from Washington, D.C., where she refused to attend Howard University because she lived on the same street as the university and found it too close for comfort. Dr. Lacan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How did Blessed Ministries get started? Wow, my goodness. So about 21 years ago, my mm -hmm. husband and I, we were just friends at mm -hmm. that time. And we were a part of a church and we started a Bible study. And from that Bible study, we called it Blessed Ministries. But also during that time, my husband was a job developer in Manhattan and he was one of the top job developers. Now for those who don't know what a job developer is or what they do, basically they look for employment for their, their clients. So when we started the, uh, the, the, the Bible study, it really launched into something else, a nonprofit. So that's how we started about 21 years ago in Brooklyn, New York. Urban Tools for Change Network is sponsored by Less Ministries Incorporated, BMI. 
the premier workforce development agency in the state of New Jersey. We are here to serve you. If you have a, a, a history of uh, being on parole, if you are on probation, if you are a uh, an adult with a disability, if you are a youth with a disability and you're looking for employment, come check us out at 973-733-WORK. So again, BMI sponsors Urban Tools for Change Network. That's great. So what do you do there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we are a workforce development agency. So what that means is we put people to work. And we work with various clients. So we work with parolees, those under the supervision of parole. We work with adults with disabilities. We work with teens with disabilities. We work with individuals receiving food stamps. Every type of, you can say, disenfranchised population we work with, which is really interesting because it goes in line with flying on broken wings. Mm -hmm. Everyone that comes through our door has some form of a broken wing and they need our services to assist them. So basically what we do is we just put people to work, we assist them in skill building, things of that nature, writing resumes, we have case managers, work regular trainer, I do some counseling if I have to, but yes, that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Give us an example of uh, a typical client that might come to you. Okay, so the typical client I would say is on parole. We work with a lot of sex offenders. So basically the typical client comes from parole and we work with parole in a sense whereas they have different units. So they have a sex offender management unit. We call them SOMUs. Mm -hmm. So the parole officer will call us, the client will come, we sit down with the client to see, first of all, where are they in terms of even their reading level, mm -hmm. their reading ability, because they have to fill out applications and things of that nature. After they do that, we understand what their strengths are, because we're strength-based. Mm -hmm. So we look at their strengths, and then also we look at if they need any accommodations on the job, things of that nature. But for the most part, we, we look at their strengths, and then we have a pool of employers mm -hmm. that we reach into sort of like a job bank in a sense mm -hmm. that we reach into and then from that what we do is connect the person with the job mm -hmm. and that's pretty much a typical day. Mm -hmm. so to work. You are entering the urban suite. Oh, Lisa. So do you have, um, when you say you reach into that bank and to pull these names, then that sounds like you have a bank of names. Mm -hmm. Is there a waiting list? It can be, it depends on the employer, because we have two types of clients. One client is the client that walks through the door, and then the other client is the employer. Mm -hmm. So say for instance, if we're working with employer X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. they may say, uh, Lisa, how many clients do you have because I have to fill these positions? Mm -hmm. Because that's a part of the workforce development. Mm -hmm. It's increasing the workforce. Mm -hmm. So if they have uh, 10 slots available, we have perhaps, 15 clients, mm -hmm. all 15 clients will apply for that job. Got you. Right, all 15 mm -hmm. clients will apply for that job and then we have to think about um, uh, attrition. Mm -hmm. So if all of them apply, 
we know that some of them are not going to absolutely right so it can be a waiting list mm -hmm. if all 15 mm -hmm. you know make it through and so we're like okay so we only have 10 slots you guys mm -hmm. so there's a waiting list for that position mm -hmm. however if we're working with another employer with a similar type of uh, skill set needed and mm -hmm. things of that nature mm -hmm. we'll trigger those five to that employer now those who are left over do they tend to get impatient waiting or do they just wait because they know it's going to happen for them? Well, typically what we do with those that are waiting, we put them into temp agencies. Got you. So that they can keep up their work ethic, keep up a skill set, mm -hmm. and then when they're ready to transition, they're ready. This is great because it sounds like once they get involved in your program, they get everything they need. Absolutely. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. The other thing I want to ask about that, though, is you have employees uh, and you have employers. So when the employers come to seek help, are you getting any pushback of any kind from the employer? No, absolutely not. What we do, they know who our clients are. Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, we always tell our clients, you don't have to disclose anything to mm -hmm. the employer. So mm -hmm. whether you have a, a disability, you don't have to disclose. Mm -hmm. Whether you have a criminal charge, you do not have to disclose. Mm -hmm. The employer know that once they come to us, there's going to be something gotcha. in that background. Right. And we also counsel our clients not to disclose on the job mm -hmm. with peers and things of that nature mm -hmm. because it's very stigmatized. Of course it is. You know, to be working next to someone that's a sex offender, mm -hmm. to be working alongside someone with a psychiatric disability, mm -hmm. to be working alongside with someone that just got out of jail for mm -hmm. murder. Mm -hmm. You know, so we basically counsel them also in that area so that they will know that it's not only about getting the job, mm -hmm. but it's about keeping, keeping the job. Yes, right. Keeping the job yeah. as well. Yeah. But the biggest thing is always keep doing your homework. Don't get comfortable because there's always new ways to do something. And that's the best way to learn is to keep, you know, informing and teaching yourself and be professional at all times. And just, you know, don't give up. Don't give up. That's just like that clip at the beginning. Don't give up. That is key. Don't give up. Do not give up. Don't give up if you know your purpose in life. You should never give up. You keep pushing that plow, keep putting your hand and pushing that plow. We're not gonna give up. It's not gonna come just by osmosis in a sense. We must not give up. Or just by you saying, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Never Ni give up. Nikola, не сдавайся. Nikola, не сдавайся. You have to work hard at it. Uh, uh. And you can do it. I won't give up. I know we can do this together. You are entering the urban suite. Oh, Lisa. And, and you know, I can see something else that's uh, that's important here too. And that is when you say that they don't have to reveal on their applications what their disability is or what their criminal background is. And the good thing is uh, that it becomes important because many times people get a job and lose the job because they checked off no where it's asking these kinds of things and it, when they find out later on that it, it was a lie, then the person loses the position. And we've had to advocate for our clients with that because what some companies will do, they will mm -hmm. hire them temp position, they will work for nine months, six months, and then as soon as they go to the full-time regular position, mm -hmm. they'll do the background check. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh no, we can't, like no. Mm -hmm. They did this right. for they, a certain amount of time and they were very proficient. Mm -hmm. So 
you got to hire them or else. And they knew up front that the people yeah, had well, a they didn't know up front for the most part. They okay. knew that they had some type of issue. Some kind of issue. Right. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know specifically what mm -hmm. the issue was. And, and so you're saying that they cannot ask what that issue is? They cannot ask. Okay. No. So, okay. They cannot ask. So now you talked about uh, these parolees, uh -huh. and you know that there's somebody in our audience who is saying, uh, well, parolees, what's, what's the difference in a parolee and someone who's on probation? Right. So what's the difference in probation <laughs> and parolee? All right, so both of them are sentencing. Mm -hmm. The probation is, your sentence is being in the community, supervised by probation officers. Someone that's on parole actually served time in prison because there's mm -hmm. also a difference between jail and prison. Mm -hmm. And what happens with someone that's on parole, they spend their time in prison, and then they sit in front of a parole board, and the parole board can say, okay, so now the supervision of you can take place out of sight the brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. So they come outside of the brick and mortar, but they're still under the Department of Corrections being supervised by parole. Mm -hmm. So say for instance, some of our sex offenders, pretty much all of them are on parole for life. Mm -hmm. So from the time they get out to the grave, they have an officer, a parole officer supervising them. Mm -hmm. And with our sex offenders, it's really, um, that unit is very, uh, how can I say, they're always on point mm -hmm. in terms of we have to notify them where they're working. Mm -hmm. We have to notify them if they're not working mm -hmm. because oftentimes they will come to your job mm -hmm. and arrest. Yes, they will arrest the person on parole because they're not supposed to be there. In wow. terms of like working with children, being around children, uh, and they go okay. into that. Oh yeah, New Jersey is very serious when it comes mm. to uh, parole. Well, you know, we're glad that they're serious about it because we need to protect children. Yes. But at the same time, if these people are in these positions mm -hmm. and uh, it's known that they're in this position, at least by your company, that mm -hmm. that's why they're there, mm -hmm. uh, is there some kind of protective mechanism for them? Mm -hmm. Do, are they protected at all by your company, that is? Oh, yeah, well, there, mm -hmm. uh, is there some kind of protective mechanism for them? Mm -hmm. Do it, Are they protected at all by your company, that is? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, well not liable in a mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. but they're protected in terms of we advocate for them. Okay. Right, so that person, he found that job on his own. Mm -hmm. We would never do that because we have the thorough assessment. Got you. <laughs> Absolutely. It, so, yeah, that's right. how it works. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, this is also interesting. So when you talk about these same people that you're putting to work, mm -hmm. So let's just say they've been in an employment now for maybe a year. Mm -hmm. What happens if they decide, well, I've been here, I'd like to move to the next mm -hmm. place or next position or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of that where they actually move out of, kind of sort of like graduate from where you are to talk yes. about that? So that go from, you know, lower level in a sense mm -hmm. to managerial positions. Mm -hmm. So when they do that, they may come back to us and say, you know what, I think I'm interested in this position. I have to interview for this position. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Can you help me with the interviewing process? So that's what we do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely.
Wow, that's this is this is great though that you all are doing this work. Oh, yeah. So there's it's, it. so it's not by accident that it's called Blessed right, Ministries, yes. right? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, but of course, as with any business, any company, any time we're trying to help anybody, there are always going to be some challenges. Yes. So what are some of the challenges that you all face? Oh, I would have to say it's working with some of our clients that really don't have the, the mindset to want to be employed. Mm -hmm. And it's very disheartening. Mm -hmm. They would rather perhaps uh, engage in criminal activity um, and it's really hard. We're working with a population that genera generationally they have been um, on welfare. So it's part of the, the generation from generation to generation and really trying to crack open that mindset mm -hmm. that work is important and not government handouts per se. Mm -hmm. So that would be the challenging thing. Mm -hmm. um, also working with our youth with disabilities. What challenged me in every year when we work with the youth with disabilities is it's not the youth per se, it's the parents relying on that income and the check that they receive mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the children. And man, I mean, they call our phone, is the check here, is the check here? Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, it's a little disheartening mm -hmm. when we experience that, mm -hmm. but you know. So is, do you think that there's a way that perhaps in the training that you're providing that that could be something that they're trained in? You know, just have to, how to manage their money, for instance. Yes. Once they get the money, yes. uh, they don't have to come to you and say, well, is the check coming, is the check coming? Because we've managed it so it's going to last from point A to point yes. Z during that. So do you do, do you do any of that? We do. Mm -hmm. We do. So with our youth and with most of our population, we have a work readiness training. Mm -hmm. So in that week, or it could be four weeks or a week, depending on the contract, we have uh, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So we talk about savings. We talk about opening a bank account. And that's what we like to do also, have mm -hmm. our clients open up a bank account. Mm -hmm. So they open up a bank account, learn about savings, learn about other things instead of just getting your money, your check, going to buy sneakers. Mm -hmm. um, so basically that's, you know, we do offer that. But again, because the work readiness training is only a week long, mm -hmm. we're combating with years of a mindset uh, absolutely. versus a week or four weeks of, right. you know, so that's the challenge. Right. Part. And so we know it takes much longer to unteach yes, something right. or unlearn something yeah. than it does to learn it. Exactly. Well, when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation and we're going to talk to Dr. Lacan a little bit about what she would like to get out of her audience. Stay tuned. You are entering the urban suite. Oh, Lisa. I want to go traveling, and they don't know where they're going, how they're going to go, when they're going to end up, how they're going to end up. I mean, what's the plan? Let's go traveling. Okay, where are we going? I don't know. Roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Bro, what are you doing, dog? You have to measure. That's not, no. What? It's just not going to pop up. The universe is just going to bless me because I, I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking I'm going to lose weight. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm speaking I'm going to lose 50 pounds. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Who is that lady? That's Lady Justice. Ooh, look at Lady Justice. Now who's that lady? Oh, oh, oh Lord. Look at that. She looks very clownish. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, but I'm sorry. How much money did they lose that they may have to recoup? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. 
What do I envision? What do I envision? What do I envision? Oh my gosh, I envision. Listen, my urbanites, I need you to like, I need you to share, and I need you to subscribe. Urban Tools for Change is on iHeartRadio now and Spotify. Yes, yay. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Thank you all for wanting to learn more about, Let's talk about what's happening urban in the urban issues. community. Plaguing our community with Dr. Lisa Lacan. Welcome back to Flying on Broken Wings, Thursday Sidebar with Dr. P.G.B. Hudson. I'm your host, Dr. Phyllis Bivens Hudson for RLS Media. And we're here with Dr. Lisa Lacan and Blessed Ministries talking about the workforce. Welcome back, Dr. Lacan. We've had a very interesting first segment talking about the workforce and those who are either marginalized in our, so in, our, in our society and how they are being re-entered into the society. So this is very interesting. I'm sure our audience is going to love to at least look at the replay on this. Um, but in addition to that, we know that there's some really good things coming out of this. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of those great things that we know are happening with Blessed Ministries? Absolutely, absolutely. Some of the wonderful things that we are very proud of our outcomes. We typically have people that, you know, our contracts are 30 day, 60 day, 90 day, 180 day placement or 150 day placement. Mm -hmm. So for a set population, we have a 100% placement rate for 30 day. We have about 100% for 60 day. And then for uh, 90 day, it's about 74%. And then 180 it goes down to 64 something like that percent so basically we're talking about working with a population of individuals that have limited skill sets however when it comes to staying on the job you know they love it and i think my staff they do an excellent job in terms of identifying the person with the employer and mm -hmm. matching it because again it's not just about staying on the job or in a sense getting the job but it's about staying on the job mm -hmm. um, and that's you know the one there's one story that really fascinated me we worked with a gentleman he was a sex offender he had limited reading ability he had limited work uh, history so when he started working with us I noticed that it took him a very long time to read over his application so I asked him if he needed assistance and he said yes because he really didn't know how to read or write. Mm -hmm. So we assisted him, he stayed on the job for a long time, it was time to do his taxes. So we had, um, at that time we were working with the tax agency and the IRS couldn't find him mm -hmm. because he had been under the radar for so many years. He had been in prison for so many years. He never had a job working above the table. So it took the IRS, I would say, about almost a month to find him. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. But they did. They found they, they him. Found, of they course they him. did. It's the IRS, right? right? Of course they found him. <laughs> they found him, and then he got his check from the IRS. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was, you know, we take things for granted, mm -hmm. you know, but for someone like that to walk through our door and to put his faith and trust in us is, you know, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I always say this is a non-judgmental mm -hmm. zone. So that word blessed is very appropriate. It, is, it speaks to everything that you all are doing. Yes. Let's talk about... This is Councilman Montague, City of Orange, Orange, New Jersey. Um, we're here today. We got two young gentlemen. What's your name, Sam? Thomas. 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 And what's your name? Adesa. Adesa. Both of these gentlemen will be working for the great city of Orange, New Jersey, in our public works department. They're eager. They're going to be getting a great wage and the experience. You can't even you can't even measure how much experience this is going to help them grow. So I'm proud to be a part of this. Congratulations, you are now hired for the city of Orange. This is Mayor Dwayne Warren. Blessed Ministries just placed both of these men with public works. Hi, Kwame, how are you? Yes. Are you it's coming aboard too? Yes. All for the city of Orange. Nice, nice.
let's talk about demographics. Mm -hmm. We've heard you talk about males. We've heard you talk about the workforce. We've heard you talk about all of those kinds of things that go on the application process, employers, and so forth. But let's look at the demographics. Are there males, females, black, white? Let's right. talk about that a little bit. Male, females, we don't have a large female population. Mm -hmm. um, most of our female population, believe it or not, comes from, we have a contract with the Department of Labor working with opioids, mm -hmm. anyone impacted by opioids. Mm -hmm. So that's where our large population of females, as well as working with the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation Services, that's DVR, working with our adults with disabilities. Mm -hmm. That's a large population also of females. Mm -hmm. We have about um, maybe three or four percent uh, Spanish-speaking uh, clients. But for the most part, black, you know, males, mm -hmm. actually. So, yeah, when you think about it, it's like, hmm. So, yeah. It's Thinking, again, about the demographics, we know that you have very limited number of females, and we know you have quite a few males. What is the, the uh, population in terms of black, white, Latino, okay. whatever? So for, I'll take the parolee population. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, the parolee population, uh, they're black. Mm -hmm. Most of our sex offenders in the parolee population are white. Mm -hmm. um, we have some Spanish speaking clients. They're typically from Elizabeth, mm -hmm. as well as Middlesex County. Mm -hmm. Because in Middlesex County with the parolees, they have a unit specifically for that population. Mm -hmm. So that's the demographics. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the youth with disabilities, it was male, yeah, mm -hmm. majority male with okay. disabilities. They had IEPs. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And so we know what, when we talk about IEPs for our, for our audience, an IEP is an individual education plan. Mm -hmm. And that just means that that plan has been designed specifically for that child's disability. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about that IEP plan or the people that come to you with disabilities, what are some of the kinds of disabilities that they have? So the adults come with us, come to us, they may have psychiatric disabilities, um, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, the youth learning disabilities, emotional disorders, some developmental disabilities as mm -hmm. well. So those are pretty much the mm -hmm. things, uh, psychiatric disabilities including schizophrenia, uh, bipolar for our youth, learning disabilities, emotional disorders, as well as developmental disabilities. So you get a very, you get a lot of use out of your degrees. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. And then also we have some with physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to ambulate so they're in a wheelchair. We work also, not a lot, but we used to work with um, deaf population. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Do you all understand the difference between responding versus reacting because there is a difference when you react you're you're not thinking about the consequences at all you're on automatic pallet impatient people can't wait five minutes for a hamburger to come your heart is beating fast all the it's always always rushing always impatient gotta go what time oh no 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 you have an abundance of anxiety that's what you have you better hurry up. You better come out. Oh, come on, girl. You better. Calm, get, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's breathe in. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be super aggressive. Let's breathe. Take some deep breaths. I did that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm talking about impatient. Now here I am blowing my horn. <laughs> but it's a work in progress. When you respond, you are very thoughtful about the consequences of your behavior. Wait without complaining. That's how long you have to be patient. It will happen, but you have to wait. How can you go through life not thinking about the consequences of your actions? Being meek is not a form of weakness at all. It's having your strength under control meek people they definitely have a quiet disposition they're not boisterous and loud and rude and ah. take some deep breaths so you can relax 
Mm, mm, mm. You don't have to walk around like a, the Tasmanian devil all the time. He creeps like a mouse, but has jaws like a lion. Mm, powerful. You are entering the urban suite. Oh, Lisa. Well, at this point, I'm going to ask you uh -huh. to ask if you had to ask your audience mm -hmm. for some kind of support. Mm -hmm. Look into the camera and tell the audience what that support might be. Uh, one of the things I would think about is a lot of our clients don't have workplace attire. So we are always seeking donations for our clients to purchase boots, clothes, ID, government issue ID, because the truth of the matter is you cannot get a job above table without a government issue ID. And unfortunately, all of our grants don't cover that. Mm -hmm. So for those grants that don't cover that, we ask for support from the community mm -hmm. in that sense. So I'm hoping that our audience is listening and that our audience is also gearing up to help you. So Dr. Lacan, mm -hmm. tell our audience where they can make these donations should they determine mm -hmm. that they'd like to support you in that regard. All right, so one of the first things they can do is look at our website. It's www.bmiworks.org. Again, that's www.bmiworks.org. Also, I have a podcast that comes on every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. and they can contact me. And for that information, it's www.drlisalacan.com. And the doctor is just DR. Mm -hmm. Now spell Lacan for them. Okay, yes. L A C as in Charlie, O N as in Nancy. So let's go with a lighter note now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about you uh, not deciding to go to a historically black college, namely ha uh, Howard University. Mm -hmm. However, we know that you did go to college <laughs> right. because you have several degrees. Mm -hmm. Tell us what college you did attend and why you decided to go where you went. All right, so I actually did go to a HBCU, historically black college or university, and I decided to go to the, the best one on the planet, <laughs> Hampton University. <laughs> So I, I went to Hampton University because I took a tour actually at Howard. So growing up in DC, I lived on Georgia Avenue and Howard is on Georgia Avenue. So it was like it was just a staple in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to the plays, um, I went to the football games at Howard. So it wasn't anything that I really wanted to do. I wanted something different. I wanted new exposure. So my counselor in high school I went to school without walls. She said, Lisa, what are you doing with your life? And I said, I don't know. And she, so she said, meet me here tomorrow morning. She dropped me off at Howard. I had a tour and they said, so what do you think of Howard? And I said, well, I'm not interested in Howard. <laughs> I don't want to go to Howard. And they said, well, what about Norfolk State, which is another HBCU? And I said, no, my cousin goes there. I'm not interested in that school. So then they said, what about Hampton? And I, was, I said, well, where's Hampton? And they said, well, it's not too far from Norfolk State. And I was like, oh, okay. So my grandmother lives in, um, well, at the time she was born, she, I mean, she was living, she was in Portsmouth, Virginia, mm -hmm. which is not far. And my cousin was in Norfolk. So I was like, okay, let me check out Hampton and here I am. And the world is better for it. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Girl, thank Google. <laughs> I Googled my symptoms. Never do that. And I really would love to get that out of my brain. <laughs> I've seen it. It's disgusting. And something about Elisa. There's something about Elisa. <laughs> oh, Lisa. I love that. Like, oh, dun, 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 dun. yes. You have to be accountable for what you did. Who, me? What? I regret nothing. The end. Did I do something I shouldn't have done? It's confusing. What? I can I, I do a... I... Am I missing something? What the hell is going on? Like, I... I you do not understand. What is this woman talking about? What you talking about, Willis? I don't want a dissertation. I just want an apology. I'm sorry you think you deserve an apology. You deserve two flushes. <laughs> Get out of here, Uncle Tina. Bye. All right, so now he's blaming the weed. This is the whole shaggy thing. It wasn't me. Entering the urban suite. Oh, Lisa. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lacan, for being with us today. We really appreciate this time that you've spent with us. We're sure that our audience will appreciate it too. And to our audience, thank you for always tuning in with us. So from RLS Media, I am your host, Dr. Phyllis Bivens Hudson. Until next time, you know what to do. Keep flying on your own wings. basically counsel them also in that area so that they will know that it's not only about getting the job mm -hmm. but it's about keeping, keeping the job keeping right the job yeah well. yeah and and you know I can see something else that's uh, that's important here too and that is when you say that they don't have to reveal on their applications what their disability is or what their criminal background is Do you do, do you do any of that? We do. Mm -hmm. we do. So with our youth and with most of our population, we have a work readiness training. Mm -hmm. So in that week, or it could be four weeks or a week, depending on the contract, we have uh, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So we talk about savings. We talk about opening a bank account. And that's what we like to do also, have our time to or certification in rehabilitation counseling and a PhD in psychiatric rehabilitation. Dr. Lacan has been a resident of New Jersey for 22 years, but is from Washington, D.C., where she refused to attend Howard University because she lived on the same street as the university and found it too close for comfort. Dr. Lacan, welcome to the show. 